Where am I? Am I at most first highest? I keep looking over to the right because that's where my camera used to be. And now I moved over to the left. To the left. To the right. To the left. To the right. <laughs> the uh, beauty of how God gives us the seasons is one that we take for granted as being a constant thing that there's spring, summer, fall, winter. But a lot of times we don't realize that there's also seasons to our soul and that there's times and perspectives that we will go through not only from childhood to maturity and passing on into eternal life, but also through the aspect of being born again that as you begin to grow as a baby newborn Christian where you're simply waddling and coddling and drinking in the milk, you know, and having your diapers changed by someone else or being in the crib that, you know, God wants to keep you in so you could be growing and maturing. And then likewise, as children begin to become the terrible twos and spiritually that happens where you see Christians come out of their, their childhood, you know, demanding their rights like we got to have the law or we got to have this religious thing and we got to do this do that do the other thing and they attack others and they smack others and they whack others <laughs> and you just go man what happened to that born again beautiful baby christian you know it's like turned into this you know like all these other people are whacked it but i'm okay you know and then they go past their twos and they begin to grow and develop personality where they have their roots, you know, and they got to get into their root study, and then they got to get into their clothing study, and they become like teens, and they got to put on their new thing, you know, well, we have a new revelation, we have a new clothes, you know, we have the latest fad, you know, we got to have our cool, and be cool, and look cool, and come up with something new cool for us cool, you know, and they grow out of that phase and they become teenagers where they either are rebellious and they gotta go their way and try something new and gotta do it my way, you know. So I'm gonna shoot off onto this tangent and stick my neck out on this branch and crawl way out into the leaves and the little, you know, edges of the trees and see just how far out on that branch I can get before it breaks. And sometimes it does. And then, you know, they get a little older, you know, then they become planters, and they begin to grow up their own little pots, you know, and their children of spiritual, you know, kind of development. Sometimes it becomes a beautiful, you know, garden. Sometimes it becomes a potted plant. Sometimes it's just a matter of letting God deal with it. And so, I see in the wisdom of the Lord and the choices that He makes that we can trust him for all that he accomplishes in us, both in Christendom, the larger Christian world at large, and in our own personal life and relationship with our wife or our children, or in church relationships, or in religion relationships, or in denominations, or in ministry, or in whatever aspect it may be. You can always relate it back to how God works in and of a father teaching his children how to become adults. You shall be holy, for I am holy. Continually restate to yourself what the purpose of your life is. The destined end of man is not happiness, nor health, but holiness, to be complete in him. Nowadays we have far too many affinities. We attach ourselves to too many distractions. We are attracted to too many other things. We are dissipated or we are less paying attention to with them more so than God. Oh, they are right, good, and noble affinities which will have their fulfillment and they seem to be the right thing to do. But in the meantime, God has to atrophy them. He has to let them pass away from us. The one thing that matters it's whether a man will accept the God who will make him holy. At all costs, a man must be rightly related to God. Do I believe I need to be holy? Do I believe God can come 
unto me and make me holy? If by your preaching you convince me that I am unholy, I resent your preaching. The preaching of the gospel awakens an intense resentment because it must reveal that I am unholy, but it also awakens an intense craving for me to become closer to God, that he may accomplish in me his holiness, that I might be complete in him. God has one destined end for man, and that is holiness. His one aim is the production of saints, to cause them to be able to be and stand in his presence with him where he is as he is. God is not an eternal blessing machine for men. He did not come to save men out of pity. He came to save men because he had created them to be holy, to have a personal relationship with him, to walk and talk with God himself. The atonement means that God can put me back into perfect union with himself without any shadow between through the death of Jesus Christ, that there would be nothing between us, but we would be one with him and speak as one to one face to face. Never tolerate through sympathy with yourself or with others any practice that is not in keeping with a holy God. Holiness often sometimes people get legalistic about rather than relationship about. So that which is continuing to develop in a personal intimacy is good. When it pulls you away from God, it's false religious ideas that try to define holiness as being distant from God, that you somehow have to make yourself better to be closer to God when it's already accomplished in God by himself doing it through Jesus. Holiness means unsullied walking with the feet, unsullied talking with the tongue, unsullied thinking with the mind, and every detail of life under scrutiny with God, because you are walking with God as God is in you. Holiness is not only what God gives me, but a manifest that God has given me that he is alive in me, both to do and to will of his complaint, but also revealing who we are, by what we are, as we are, as we show forth that God really is living in us, and that he speaks through us as he chooses. And that's what holiness is. It's a completeness in him, not a holiness to him. Big difference. One, you're looking at him. One, you are with him.